Well, greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. Today's episode, I thought I would dig a little bit deeper into one of my Maker Faire Nova projects. And I thought I'd entitle it, There's More Than One Way to Spend the Pokey Stop. Before we get started, I do want to say that I had a blast at Maker Fair Nova and I wanted to thank you guys for all your support, all your feedback on social media, and about a dozen of you showed up at my booth and said that you had seen me on YouTube and at least three of you came from out of state. Um, thank you so much for seeing me. I don't tire of talking about 3D printing, so it was delightful to have those conversations with you. It was delightful to see your prints. It was delightful to get a um, maker coin from one of you. Um, anyways, thank you. The Pokestops that I want to talk about specifically today is the spinning Pokestop ornament that I did for the fall and Christmas time. Uh, the idea was it's going to be a Pokestop and just like the real thing, it was going to spin. With 2300 downloads, the Pokestop is my most popular model on Thingiverse, and granted, I don't have a lot up there. It's also the first time I ever noticed this little verified thing icon. A lot of you may have already downloaded it, and I know at least one of you has done a companion model for this, Michael Phelps, and I'll put his channel uh, down below. He actually designed and printed a stand for the Pokestop ornament, so it could be an actual Pokestop. So this all prints, this little version, all prints as one small piece. Uh, I did the modeling in what's called OpenSCAD, which is free. Uh, my background is software development, so for me it was an easy leap to learn the programming-based modeling that's in OpenSCAD. Uh, if you want to learn OpenSCAD and get into the nitty-gritty details of how I did this model, it is up on Thingiverse, and I tried to heavily comment the code to explain what I was doing. Nothing too rocket science-y here. What it's a good illustration of is um, object modifying, boolean modifying, uh, subtracting objects from other objects. So here, like if you look at the outer rim, uh, it's just a big cylinder and it's subtracted by a smaller cylinder. When you get to these inner half circles, it's just a cylinder and a smaller cylinder is subtracted from it. And then we also have a little tiny small rectangle, a cube, subtracted from it as well. Where my designing had to come into play, my thinking, is uh, making it spin. And at first I thought, I was fresh off of the, the remix of the gyro cube, and I'm like, oh, I'll just use the same connections that I used there. And what that was is I used cones um, that focused on a 45 degree angle, I had a male version that's just a cone and a female version that's, you know, just a, a section that um, has a slightly larger cone subtracted from it. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll just reuse that. Uh, I didn't even get as far as doing a print because when I looked at it in the model render, I could see aesthetically it was clunky and it wasn't really going to be what I was looking for. So then I decided to take advantage of bridging. And I want to be clear that this is not my innovation. There are other moving part models out there on Thingiverse. Uh, there's an articulated man that comes to mind. Um, that's using the same thing. It's using bridging where the printer is going to span an open gap between two points. What I ended up doing is my um, pokey stop, the parts that are spinning, actually have a hole going all the way through it. And then um, I have a little octagon axis that's going in the middle and it's not touching it um, and then I have these little tiny placeholders that are going to be my bridging points and also it's going to make sure that the Pokestop pieces stay in place so they're little placeholders. These placeholders are an example of intersections. If you did a Venn diagram of people who like hiking and people who like 3D printing, you know where they overlap, those are people who like hiking and 3D printing and I'm in there. So that's what I did here. Uh, my little placeholders are actually like small little tiny cylinders that are subtracted from cylinders, so it's really thin cylinders. And then I did a wide cube, um, and it's just the intersection of what's there. So they have the same kind of curvature uh, as the pieces that they are holding in. 
When I got to the bigger version, as I mentioned in my last video, I didn't quite have the confidence in my bridging settings on my 0.75 millimeter nozzle. Hey, I bet it's probably possible if I wanted to dedicate the time to it. Um, at that particular time, it was easier for me to just change up the code and change the model. And what I decided to do was to do two pieces, two prints. And I printed the axis as its own piece. Uh, which I later would embed into the bigger portion of the Pokestop. Now here, um, the access piece was not only just bigger, there are some modifications to it as well. And which is these little placeholders that's holding the Pokestop in, they're actually flush with the access itself. So it's printing, the first layer is going to print the little placeholder and the access. Another model modification I had to make to my access is I had to add a little anchor to hook it in inside the outer rim piece to hold it in place. Now, when I got to the big piece of the Pokestop, of course, I had to make anchor holes. And the other modification I had to make to the Pokestop itself is the hole that was going to hold our access. Just like when I was embedding the nut, you know, you, you think about the process. You're, your print is growing from the bottom up and at some point I need to put this access in. In which case I couldn't make my hole be a circle because it was going to start to close up. So I stole my same shenanigans that I did from the embedded nut and just uh, made it uh, extended up the hole and you know I wasn't sure like hey is this going to cause some wobbling with the pokey stomp? And here if you're going to fail you fail fast. So first I printed a small little version of it, a small little version of my access that I embedded in and um, you know, just made sure that it wasn't going to wobble, um, that it was going to stay in place. Um, the other advantage of this is I was able to check my clearances um, of my anchor piece and you know, see how it's going. And I had the backup plan, like if I felt this access piece and the anchor was a little loose, I could always like squirt some glue into that area. So really mostly I was just looking for a wobble here on the spinning piece. The actual printing, nothing too complicated. It was uh, two Simplify 3D processes. So, you know, went up to my stopping point. Um, I had a custom ending script. So the nozzle lifted up, put the piece in, I started my next layer, which would start, which seal in my um, Pokestop access piece. Yay! Well, that's today's episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this gives you some idea on how you can incorporate spinning into some of your pieces, be it through little male-female connectors, be it through using bridging, or be it through using embedded pieces, or maybe you'll be embedding something else, like bearings. If you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and comment down below on YouTube. Uh, you can find me at TGAW on Twitter. Uh, my 3D printing blog is at www.tgaw.com. And I'll put the links to the little pokey stop down below. And I think that's about it. I thank you guys for watching. Thanks again for all your support with my Maker Faire. And I hope you have a lovely day.